The Marvel Universe is filled with characters better than the last, but this one guy has multiple personas all in one. Now, that's thinking outside the box, right? Now, in true fandom fashion, we want to know which of those personas is the strongest, and which one of them can defeat the Avengers. We're sure you've guessed that we're talking about everyone's favorite boy, Moon Knight. So, let's break it down together. First off, let's talk about the most dangerous persona of Moon Knight. So, it turns out that the Avengers believe one person to be a clear and present danger when it's revealed that they imposed restrictions on Moon Knight freedom. Fans of Moon Knight are aware of the hero's several identities, which are the product of both his DID and the Moon God, Honshu's mental power. But you guys wouldn't be able to guess exactly which persona the Avengers consider the most dangerous. We already know that Moon Knight's civilian personas are Mark Spector, Jake Lockley, and Stephen Grant, while Mr. Knight is another vigilante character that prioritizes research over violence. Talk about having an inner conflict. Now, in the comic book series Age of Honshu, the Avengers faced out against Honshu. He gave gave Moon Knight the command to start attacking the Avengers. In his mission to defend Earth, the vigilante carried out the instructions given by his god by killing Ghost Rider, Iron Fist, Doctor Strange, and even Black Panther. Rest in peace. Then, Moon Knight rebelled and joined the Avengers to overthrow Honshu, as the villain soon overstepped his bounds and turned New York City into his kingdom. Typical villain behavior. The condition the Avengers set on Moon Knight's continuing independence after the age of Honshu was revealed by the psychiatrist for Moon Knight. She was to concentrate on the Mark Spector persona. The psychologist expressly states that the Avengers believe the biggest threat is Mark Spector, not Jake Lockley or Stephen Grant. Yikes. Next, why is Mark Spector such a threat? We know you're shocked by this tiny piece of information, and rightfully so. For a very long time, viewers have been aware of how distinctly diverse each of the Moon Knight's personalities is. Jake Lockley is a brutal and aggressive street fighter, while Master Knight has shed a tremendous amount of blood despite being the most recent persona. Stephen Grant is a wealthy philanthropist, with a milder persona, at least in the comics. But it was mercenary Mark Spector who initially struck a deal with Honshu to take on the role of Moon Knight. It appears that the Avengers' view of Moon Knight's relationship with Honshu, rather than his violence, as his most hazardous quality by designating him the greatest threat. That does make sense now, doesn't it? Coming up, it's clear that the age of Honshu hasn't been forgotten by the Avengers. Since the age of Honshu, Mark Spector has intentionally suppressed his other personalities in an effort to appear more stable to the Avengers. But as it turns out that he's now placed the persona that they loathe the most in command, the irony truly isn't lost on us. Mark meets with Black Panther in the original Age of Honshu plot and explains that he isn't being used but rather supports God's cause. The Avengers can tolerate someone like Jake bleeding his knuckles on the street, but it's evident that they view someone who reports to a higher authority they don't trust as dangerous. Although Mark has since abandoned Honshu, this is still the case today. Mark Spector is regarded by the Avengers as the most deadly Moon Knight persona, and the explanation for this demonstrates that even though they're letting him go free, Earth's mightiest heroes are still bitter about the age of Honshu. Up next, let's talk about Moon Knight's strength, shall we? Let's find out what the hype is all about. Although Moon Knight's strength is frequently contested, he consistently proves that he is strong enough to defeat every member of the Avengers. The fact that Moon Knight competes against each of the Avengers every night and prevails is the best indication of his rather formidable powers. The power of Moon Knight can vary depending on whose personality is in charge, the moon's phase, and whether Honshu is now on his side. Yet he consistently has the strength to fend off enemies that are far stronger than he is. He's already a more than capable street level opponent thanks to his training as Mark Spector, and with Honshu's approval, the man's ability to access the god's magic and might, though generally at a price. Now, let's take a deeper look at how that works. Each story in the anthology series Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood focus on a rather distinct aspect of Moon Knight. It's a format that works really well for the troubled nature of Moon Knight and his alter egos. The author's various voices and the characters they choose to write about make a great job of depicting Moon Knight as a whole. These variations aren't always possible with a single perspective plot. They all function as the fist of Honshu in their own distinctive ways, whether it be Mr. Knight in his mission, Jake in his taxicab business, or Mark donning a cloak and a cowl. Coming up, let's talk about one of his dreams. Moon Knight describes a nightly dream in which he stands on a gaming board with the X's and a single O in Christopher Cantwell and Alex Lynn's story Good Morning from Moon Knight, Black, White, and Blood number 4. By the end of the night, he must transfer to the O while remaining on an X results in death. Now here's the twist. Each square compels him to face increasingly difficult challenges from Moon Knight's fiercest foes to his friends and finally himself. The important part? Moon Knight seems to be completely conscious throughout these dreams 
Chaos. They depict as actual challenges that Moon Knight must overcome in Honshu's presence, rather than as figments or dreams. This indicates that when he must overcome his companions to advance, he's not fighting using dream logic, but rather is engaged in a life or death struggle with some of Marvel's most powerful characters. Not only has Moon Knight not yet been defeated by a single Avenger, but he has also defeated each one of them individually because loss meant death. While all of this could just be a dream, it's important to keep in mind that Honshu, the Moon God, rules the night, and thus, whatever dream his avatar has, carries the weight of Moon Knight's powers through Honshu. Now, in addition to serving as representation of Moon Knight's ongoing internal conflict, even if Moon Knight hasn't faced off against each member of the Avengers during the day, the fact that he has shown that he's capable of doing so every single night speaks volumes about his potential. More on our news radar. Now, let's talk about the fact that Wolverine, Moon Knight, and Morbius may be part of the Marvel Halloween anthology. This October, Marvel Comics will publish a special one-shot anthology called Crypt of Shadows Number 1, just in time for Halloween. Love us some Halloween bonuses. The comic will include a stellar cast of writers and illustrators exploring tales from the Marvel Universe's most sinister comers, featuring figures like Moon Knight, Morbius, Wolverine, and more. The collection pays homage to the first Crypt of Shadows comic book series, which Marvel released in the 1970s. This original series told a horror tale in the traditional fashion of the 1970s. A man struggling with a dog phobia was the subject of the comic book series. Up next, what does the story focus on? The story switches between two more nested tales of supernatural terror as the protagonists are seeing a psychiatrist for counseling on his phobia. The story switches between two more nested tales of supernatural terror as the protagonists are seeing a psychiatrist for counseling on his phobia. And all the stories come together horrifyingly in the conclusion. Despite having a similar name, this new anthology series is going to be set in the present day Marvel Universe and will include well-known actors. Crypt of Shadows number one recently announced by Marvel will offer readers tales starring Morbius, Moon Knight, Wolverine, Elsa Bloodstone, Man-Thing, and Werewolf by Night. Bloodline, the daughter of Blade, who made her debut in this year's free comic book day, Avengers X-Men number one, will also be featured in a narrative there. These stories promise to be frightening even though they include well-known personalities. The comic promises to send chills down readers' spines as Marvel's heroes and anti-heroes battle vampires, werewolves, and a variety of other monsters. We can't wait. Now, we've saved the best news for last, and that's Hugh Pool. In true Deadpool fashion, Ryan Reynolds broke the news. Deadpool is known for being one of Marvel's most trigger-happy, stab-happy, punch-happy, etc. characters. And now, Deadpool 3 starring Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman hits theaters on September 6, 2024. But, Reynolds seems to have run out of ideas for the film, and he sincerely hopes that Wade Wilson's first appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and this third outing with the Merc with the Mouth will be something exceptional, something that fans will always recall, something to really set Deadpool apart from the competition. Apart from that, Reynolds got nothing, except for one suggestion. Would you like to play Wolverine for one final time, Hugh Jackman? Jackman's carefree response to that was, yeah, sure. We're super excited to see how that pans out. That's a wrap. Let us know in the comments below. Let us know if you agree that the Moon Knight is the worst. Hit like and click that subscribe button and we'll be back with another video. Bye.